Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, let us talk about the, uh, let us continue with the real business cycle model that we are discussing about and I hope uh, you, you are now able to understand the difference between the neoclassical and the, the Keynesians that we have. So, we will continue with that so, where we had left in the last session and we will start with the, with the some reference that we have. So, here the reference remains same about the so, Stephen D. Williamson is the same reference book for this particular lecture and we will have the understanding about the, the key learning objectives that we have, how the, the real business cycle model could be observed co-movement, money and output. So, objectives remain same, not much change. We have already covered these things, uh, so let us not get. So, we were here talking about that how when we have the productivity shock, so how this productivity shock is creating a favorable situation and when we can think about the consumption uh, and investment, employment, real wage and average lower, lower per, uh, average labor productivity uh, becoming pro-cyclical. Now, what we thought about that when we have money supply increase, this money supply had a very, I would say when, when we thought about money supply increasing, we saw price decreasing. So, that became a, a quite a uh, uh, quite very odd to understand. So, we will now focus on that part. So, in the real business cycle model, the money is neutral, which means that if the money supply increasing by 10 percent, it is leading to increase in the nominal variables by 10 percent the same. So, you have the easy transfer. If money supply increasing by 20 percent, price also increases by 20 percent. So, that we have the smoothness. We do not find that kind of increase in a real variables consumption, investment and all. What uh, it also means that if the central bank is planning to just go for helicopter drop kind of thing, then it may not work in most of the cases. In the real business cycle model, the pro cyclical of the money supply can be explained by the way of indigenous money. So, in the previous to previous session, when we are talking about the monetary intertemporal model, what we assumed that the money supply is exogenous, which means that it is not decided by the uh, within the model, it is coming from outside the model. So, which means that the economic agents do not decide about the shape of monetary policy. Monetary policy decided by the central bank and central bank takes independent decisions. But under the real business cycle model, they did not, uh, uh, they did not confirm this idea and rather they argued that if the individuals are playing very important role. If the economy consists of individuals, firms and the markets, then it is wise to assume that the money supply is, is an indigenous variable. And in this context, it became a quite evident. The money supply could increase in response to an increase in total product, uh, factor productivity because of the response of monetary policy. So, if you have some schemes launched by the government and if government is the sole I would say owner of the uh, the monetary and fiscal policy, then it becomes really uh, difficult in certain cases when we have the total factor productivity increasing scenarios, you find that monetary policy get incentivized and they also offer incentives. So, that kind of understanding it is needed here. So, here it becomes easier when you have the money supply increase. So, you have the rightward shift because of that we also see that there will be demand for money rising and so here if the if this money supply increase if it is not uh, if, if the central bank role is just to maintain the price stability and if it goes for then we see that the price level does not change but here you have the but here you have the demand for money changing and demand for money once it changes then you have the role of rate of interest playing an important role. So, by this we say that even with the lower rate of interest, the households are 
are having more demand for money and this creates a, this type of scenario where you have the price almost constant though, though it should have been lower but the central bank role is to maintain the price stability so this is how it looks like. So this is the title the pro cyclical money supply in the real business cycle model with endogenous money since it is deciding uh, decided within the model. So the rate of interest that we had assumed here lower this comes into picture here and because of that we are finding a such type of behavior with respect to price. So which means that anything that we have here price increase this will translate into this. Now implications, implication is that the money the neutral money supply has no effect on the business cycle model smoothening. The role of government policy is limited as we do not find any kind of inefficiencies in this particular model most of the variables are becoming pro cyclical and that is why once you have once you do not deal with any kind of inefficiencies then there is no role of the government. So inefficiencies in the sense that we are talking about distorting taxes externalities and this is how we try to interact. There is also no reason that the government should vary is a spending in response to fluctuations in total factor productivity. So, this is how it looks for that government should vary it should go for higher spending or it should have the variations with regard to total factor productivity this is not needed because we are do not we do not see any kind of inefficiencies. Second thing is that the allocation is perfect so it is ideal so if it is satisfying the optimal criteria the Pareto optimality criteria then also you do not require. So, in the one period model we had assumed that you have a social planner. So, as a social planner role is not needed here because here we have a most of the things becoming optimal automatically. So, this, this is how the real business cycle is known for. Now, the major shortcomings of the real business cycle theory if you think about so the first thing is that it depends upon the solo residual and it has been often found by studies that solo residual uh, is having a limitations with regard to the trend GDP and the cyclical variation that it offers and because of this we often find that it is not the accurate measure for the total factor productivity. Total factor productivity could be linked with the how much is the expenditure on R and D and how it is it is decided and in which direction it is moving. So, that could be one of the value additions. Real business cycle school of economic thought does not take into account different phases of business cycle. So, as in the last session as I mentioned about the business cycle that business cycle will have two phases one is the peak and another is trough or expansion or contraction. So, if you have expansion and contraction taking place then uh, a, this particular business cycle model explains about in most of the cases it explains about the, the business cycle dynamics in the expansion phase because total factor productivity increase if you are thinking in the positive sense then it happens in most of the cases during the normal period because firms do not care about making investment because they know that the marginal product of capital is going to be higher so it is better they would go for but once you have um, you have slow down so for example during the peak period when you have the expansion so all the machinery and everything is working optimally and you have a more employment and people are just uh, working 24 hours to produce output during slowdown it may not be the same. So, the real business cycle school of economic thought does not take into account. So, when once we have the factor product increasing it does not mean that it is increasing even during the recession period. During recession period it may happen that the firm will go for labor holdings because they know that if they will if they lay off these labors then they will be getting a job somewhere else some other companies will hire or they may May, they may not be able to get these levers again at the at the right time when the economy recovers or it is in the recovery phase. So, most of the labor holding issue it is not being discussed by the the real business cycle school of economic thought and these are the major limitations of this. So, uh, I, I hope uh, with this background you have uh, some kind of understanding about the real business cycle school of economic thought. 
Now we will be talking about the so Kidland and Prescott model that we discussed about yield business cycle. It has wide applications and you will find that in macroeconomic literature, if you are working on the business cycle school of economic thought, even if you know about it, it is well appreciated because they know more about such type of behavior. And you should know about uh, you should know about such type of behavior in the economy, especially the macroeconomic dimensions, because uh, it is important that you should f be focusing not just on the demand side, but also on the supply side of the economy, how total factor product is increasing. You, you may not be relying more on the, the solar residual, but you can calculate productivity by different factors and then you can see how these things are working. Now, let us start with the Keynesian model. So, Keynesians argued that the real business cycle model explains more or less the, the explanations in the context of, of or it is linked more or less with the supply side thinking about the demand supply for labor, money supply and then you have the, then you have the output. So, overall it creates a very rosy scenario, but it has certain limitations. So, Keynesian school of economic thought. Uh, launch an attack with model what they call it as Keynesian coordination failure model. Now, what does mean by the coordination failure? Coordination failure has lot of meaning. So, they had very innovative idea that if, if you find everything good in the economy, then you have a hard behavior among the investors, among the firms, among the households. So, uh, it is also linked with some kind of, of uh, some kind of consumption behavior, what we call, uh, call it the demonstration effect, where you demonstrate your consumption behavior or you try to uh, copy from someone else. So, it starts with very good example that if you have, a, if, if you think that you uh, someone is organizing a party you have a, you have a colleagues friends your college colleagues or university colleagues are are going for a party or going for a picnic trip and you know that no one is going then you will also be having the similar kind of attitude and you will also simply cancel or will not be interested but if you have planned a picnic and if it is organized by a good set of well uh, well thought uh, planners and among the group if you think that some people are efficient and they organize the picnic very efficiently. So, what will happen that everyone will be interested right and then if you have the information that everyone is going on that picnic then you would also like to follow them right. So, what is the learning here? Learning here is that in the economy if you have a good scenarios then you find that everyone is trying to make things out of it and they are following one another. So, here you have the chain of reactions happening. So, maybe if you are if you are software supplier, then you would like that how much if there is enough supply of hardware, enough sale of hardware, then your software will also be dependent upon that. In the same way, if you have a good income generated and if you know that you have a households are earning good amount of wage and it is creating a good favorable situation for the household. They are not worried about current and future consumption. Even if there is variation, they are easy to smooth out. Then you know that a certain group of consumer will be asking for certain types of goods and services. Then the demand and supply of those services will also increase. For example, if you think that you want to buy a car and everyone uh, everyone is recommending that you should buy this car and this car feedback is really good. Everyone is excited about it. You can see that you have a, um, you have a lot of um, that model car uh, uh, car accepted by households and there is a uh, good review coming up. So, everyone is following the news and development. It means that you will be also tempted to go for that kind of trendy car. So, in the same situation you have at the coordination level. So, if what the coordination means? Coordination means that there is some kind of strategic complementarities in the economy. So, one sector is dependent upon a, on, a, on another. So, if you have a, if you have a, a food supply chain, a food supply chain if they think that 
there will be enough demand in the market then they will be only buying the goods uh, buying the inputs from the farmers so farmer who is producing those inputs he will be also further incentivized to invest more and produce more and once he is able to sell to the food supplier then food supplier are also uh, happy because their goods are also being sold so if everything is good good in the economy you find a strong uh, strategy complementarities and if it is not good then we do not see that kind of behavior so that's what we are calling it here strategic complementarities it shows that the aggregate production function has an increasing returns to scale so so far in most of the models it is very uh, common to assume that you have a constant return to scale so once you have the constant return to scale it means that by producing by increasing one unit of inputs you are able to get only one unit of output but if you are uh, if you are increasing one unit of output and if you are able to produce 50 units of output that which we call it as the increasing returns to scale and the labor demand function can be upward sloping there can be a multiple equilibria in the sense that uh, one group may be more optimistic another group may be pessimistic so the optimism and pessimism that we have in the economy it has lot to deal with the with such type of strategic complementarities so there it becomes really important the the keynesian school of economic thought when they argued with this coordination failure model they said that if in the economy if we do not have a strategy complementarity is playing important role then it becomes really difficult to uh, to fit the data in the model and then the what keynesians uh, uh, had come up with the uh, with the evidence that whatever model they had assumed it f it fits well with the data and it it had fitted well with the data and it also explained the real business cycle dynamics in a better way so here we have the gdp fluctuates in the model because of the self fulfilling waves of optimism and pessimism so this is how they try to explain so overall what what is the meaning of the uh, the keynesian coordination model so keynesian coordination model talks about the interdependence between the industries between firms between sectors and then one firm may be using the intermediate uh, may, one firm may be using the output of one sector as an intermediate good for producing the final product so there also you have the strategic case of complementarities so this is what it says that the production function will have the increasing returns to a scale so once we have the increasing returns to a scale so this shows about that you have the the output and here you have the labor as you increase the labor your output also increases by the same amount but after some point of time it increases more than what you have in in input and it will have always be uh, always be the case that demand for labor will be greater than because it is if it is about the increasing uh, returns to a scale then you will have such type of of uh, coordination so here you will have the demand for for uh, labor will be higher than the supply so slope of this will be higher than slope of this so this is mainly has to deal with the increasing returns to a scale and this is how we try to prove it so here what they what they mean by this is that if you have the output and here you have the um, such type of scenarios if you have the rate of interest increasing right what is the meaning of this if so this is the r1 r1 is the equilibrium scenario if you have the rate of interest increasing then if if this is how we are thinking about so if the rate of interest increases then we find that this rate of interest increase is leading to decrease in output and this decrease in output it is having further impact on the labor supply and this labor supply is having further impact on the demand and supply of labor so earlier we were having here which means that here we had more wages more labor but because of this shock that you have because of the rate of in interest increase what we are seeing that here the coordination is not playing important role and as a result here you have the wage rate becoming lower and rate of uh, and the labor supply is also getting lower so if we think about 
in the coordination setup. So, what it means that in the macroeconomic scenarios, if you have the rate of interest higher, then this rate of interest higher, it can be linked with the uh, this rate of interest higher, it can be linked with the with the further distortion in your output and you will find that whatever you have the output decreasing y1 to y2 it has more to deal with the with the labor supply right so labor supply is decreasing uh, strongly than the original point so here you have n1 and here we are seeing n2 and the demand and supply of labor also changes so here you have n1 and n2 playing important role now in case of multiple equilibria, if you have multiple equilibria case, then that becomes important to look at. If you have the multiple equilibria, then there we try to explain that if you have multiple equilibria, then role of optimism and pessimism will play important role. So, if you have the role of optimism and pessimism, so here you can think about R1 and here you have R2. So, if the rate of if you have, if you think that if you have a good optimism or pessimism uh, or good optimism, so one group of individuals, so maybe uh, if you think about the multiple equilibria, then this could be a situation wherein we are thinking about a equilibrium scenario where the optimist are there. There are two groups. One group is having a, a some kind of equilibrium and he, this particular group is optimistic another group is pessimist and if you have a optimistic and pessimistic scenario playing very important role i think i have shown that so if you have a op optimistic and a pessimistic scenarios uh, playing very important role then in that setup it becomes important to see how you can uh, think about so there there will be role of sun spots what do you mean by sun spots sun spots are basically the the situations wherein we are creating a, some kind of optimistic scenarios for the industries for the firm and there they think that either because either productivity has increased or either it is going to be the low interest rate environment or either it is going to be because of the government intervention so you have the government incentives given either because of the tax reduction or the increase in government expenditure. So, once you have a such type of expectation then what typically happens that a one group of investors will be or one group of firms or the strategy complementarities existing in a particular firm setup will flourish and they will be going for increasing their production, they will be hiring more labor. So, this creates a really favorable scenario for the business cycle model. But in, in, in another typical model, what typically happens that if you have pessimistic scenario, then in that setup, it may happen that it is because of the increase of taxes. So, government may be increasing taxes, you have um, increase in money, uh, a decrease in money supply scenario, increase in interest rate environment and they are not very bullish about. So, in most of the economies, you will find that you find certain sun spots. So, in for example, in in case of Indi in Indian economy or any global economy, if you think about sun spots, so best example will be the stock market. If the stock market is going up, so it is showing some kind of optimistic scenario. So there you have a, a sun spot that this can be identified as sun spot because it creates a favorable scenario. It is forward looking variable and this forward looking variable, it is incentivizing the firms to look for a better investment opportunities, look for better growth opportunities, invest more, hire more labor, create more employment, create more consumption, create more output and everything should become a pro cyclical scenarios. So, in pro cyclical scenarios, it becomes really, really important to look at that how we are looking at. So, if you have a productivity increase, this could be because of these reasons that I mentioned. So, as a result, what do you have is that here you have W1 and what we see is that here you have a W2. So, because of this, this is if this is what we are assuming about the optimistic scenario. So, the wage rate will increase and then here you have the labor supply increasing as a result what we see is that your output is increasing and what we see in case of classicals that we mentioned about real business cycle new classical, this is the same scenario we observe that money demand increases, the cash holding increases and then you have the price 
decreasing. So, this also creates a perverse situation. So, multiple equilibria has a lot of meaning in macroeconomics especially with regard to the business cycle and we will be spending some more time on this particular setup and we will try to understand, we will revisit the multiple equilibria again because it is very interesting topic to look at and maybe I will add one or two examples here to showcase that how the the coordination failure model which is one of the important tools of the Keynesian school of macroeconomics where they talk about that certain interdependence between firms, one firm dependent upon another, one good is, is purchased by one firm and it is also dependent upon the sale of another then it becomes really important to see that how the, the agents are interacting with each other and how this creates the scenario. So, I will be stopping it here and then I will uh, have a, a one more session dedicated on this Keynesian coordination model and then in that we will try to further see that how we can understand the uh, or we can have the harmonization uh, between the real business cycle school of economic theory on, on coordination failure model and how we can harmonize these two conflicting ideas in the context of monetary and the fiscal setup and then we will see that the, whether the Keynesian is, is making more sense than the neoclassical and how uh, these two models are evolving. But overall I hope uh, it, has, uh, it has helped you understand the coordination models in a better way. I am stopping it here. Thank you. Thank you so much.